Well, welcome everyone. I know it's always a little tight in here for these programs, um, but uh, I, I'm not sure if there's someone else trying to come in or not. No? Yeah, the astronomy teacher. Yeah. <laughs> hmm, he can come in. Where I'm, I'm, there's room. He? She? She? I saw a man out there. That's why I said he. Should we come in in a second? Okay. I didn't want you to think that I was assuming that all astronomy teachers are men. <laughs> um, all, all the good ones are the women? Is that what? Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm happy everybody's here tonight. Um, do we have uh, a repeat um, customers tonight? Have you guys been here before? Yeah? Some of you, are, yeah, okay. I um, you've been here before, super, okay. <laughs> so have I, but I actually don't come here very often anymore. I um, used to live in Washington, Connecticut, and I used to teach here in New Milford. I used to teach art in New Milford, and now um, I live outside of Boston and I teach science. So um, those are my two passions. Um, I guess three if you want to count teaching too. But uh, I always try to. Um, in all my art lessons and my science lessons, I always try to bring those two passions of mine together. And so once a year I come back here to the McCarthy Observatory to do um, an astronomy sketching journal um, of evening. So um, I'll be passing out at the end um, one of these. You can see them over there on the, um, at the corner of the counter. These are astronomy sketching journals that I want you guys to take. They're mostly for the kids, but I think I probably have enough for adults, interested adults, to take them too, if you want. And there's pencils there as well. Because I'm going to send you away with a challenge um, activity, uh, a sketching challenge to do tonight. And the telescope operators here are aware that you're supposed to be, uh, or you don't have to, but um, that I've given you a, a sketching challenge to work on tonight. Um, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, does anybody here go to Hill and Plains School, by the way? You do? Yeah? Super. Well, I used to be the art teacher there. That was my school, but I left about five years ago, four years ago. I've kind of lost track now. So, um, anyway, this telescope here um, isn't even in operation yet. Uh, this is the James Webb Space Telescope, and um, it's expected to be online um, in 2018, and the astronomy community is very excited about it. It will be the most amazing telescope ever um, if it works right. So be paying attention to that. There's a lot that has to work right in order for this to um, to operate uh, as intended. And uh, it's not like the Hubble. It's going to be so far away in space that nobody's going to be able to go and fix it. So, um, anyway, this was just my introductory um, slide here to let us know what to think about in the future. Um, but, as I said, this is part of the astronomy journal series that I have. And I call this Through the Looking Glass tonight because um, what we're going to be looking at is um, uh, different types of equipment um, that scientists use to help them see things that are difficult or impossible to see with the naked eye or the unaided eye. So I'd like you guys to take a moment here to look at this little, these two instruments a little bit more closely. And I bet most of you recognize what they are. Um, as you look at them and you remember what you know about them, and as you look at them and notice things that you see right now, I'm wondering what you think, what are some things you th can think of that are common about both of them, or what's similar about both of them? Yes? Um, they both have like magnifying glasses. Okay, they both have like a lens in them? Yeah, sure, they do. But you knew that, right? Yeah, do you see those magnifying glasses or lenses in there? No, we don't see them in there, but you know them, so you're smart. You've got a lot of information in that brain there. What else do you see here, too, that is similar about them? Because I want you to start looking at the equipment tonight, um, not just as a scientist who would use these pieces of equipment, 
but also um, as an artist um, to notice the forms and the shapes and the details and colors and textures. Um, that's what draws me to um, these, these pieces of equipment not just what they're used for, but also I find them to be really beautiful, almost sculptural pieces, works of art. So when I look at this, I also notice that they're both made of brass. They've got like kind of a gold metal. Um, <clears throat> and uh, they both are kind of long cylinders. So I'm noticing some of the details that I can see also, and not just how they're used. Um, <clears throat> So what I wanted to talk about tonight is why are we bothering to sketch scientific um, instruments. Um, I've actually done this as um, an activity in art class um, often, uh, again, because they are like sculptures um, and interesting um, things to look at from that point of view. But I'm getting ahead of myself, too. Um, we'll talk about microscopes and telescopes and um, and how we can look at them tonight for sketching. Um, I don't think we're going to have any time to discuss what else is in the sky tonight, but um, I'll leave that up to the people who have the um, telescope set up outside in the field. Um, <clears throat> so this text here, uh, these two p uh, pieces of text are about um, the microscope and the telescope. Do I have a volunteer who would like to read what you see here about microscopes? Anybody want to read that, or are you going to leave that up to me? How about you? Can you read that for us? No? Yeah? You, you can read it, too. Yeah, thank you. A microscope is an optical instrument that uses a lens or a combination of lenses to produce magnified images of small objects, especially of objects too small to be seen. Thank you. You did that well. <laughs> um, how about a volunteer to read about the telescope? Anybody want to read that for me? Okay. A telescope is an optical instrument designed to make distant objects appear nearer, containing an arrangement of lenses or of curved mirrors and lenses by which rays of light are collected and focused and the resulting image magnified. Thank you. So um, there are a couple of different words here <clears throat> that um, are repeated in both passages. What's one of the words that you've seen in both of these? Yes? Magnifying. Okay, magnifying, sure. What else do you see in both? Yes? Lenses. Lenses, right? Anything else? Yeah? Instruments. Instruments. Oh, you guys are good. You're much, you're finding more words than the first group that was in here. Yes? Objects. Objects. I love it. Okay. So there's a lot about these, the microscope and the telescope that's similar, right? There's things that are different, too. Um, but, in other words, a microscope helps us see small things that are close by, and a telescope helps us see big things that are far away. <clears throat> and I'm wondering, oops, went too fast. This is a new computer, so I haven't quite figured out how to use it all <laughs> very well. Um, anyway, um, what are some things that we can see better using a microscope. Does anybody know? Has anybody ever used a microscope here? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> um, so anybody want to share with me what things you see better with a microscope? Yes? Germs. Oh, yeah. Tiny little germs. Right. We don't want any of those, do we? No. Yes? Cells. <laughs> Cells. Sure. Sure. Oh, yeah. Molecules, I love it. We've got some scientists of all kinds here. And someone in the back was going to volunteer something too. But <laughs> oh, uh, any, you know, microscopic objects mm -hmm. they can't see with the naked eye. Teeny tiny little things, right? Crystals. Crystals, ooh, good, good. I've used, uh, that reminds me, um, one of our uh, telescope operators here, um, this is just an aside because I'm excited about it, but um, uh, Bill Cloutier, I think he's up on the um, our big telescope under the dome here. He sometimes is able to borrow um, or uh, 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 samples of um, lunar uh, regolith that he um, can bring to the students, um, so we can look at the you know moon moon rocks um, under a microscope. 
So that's actually really cool. So it doesn't all have to be living things that we see um, in a microscope. Anyway, um, and then what are some things that we can see with uh, better with a telescope? Yes? The moon. the moon. Yeah. Has anybody seen the moon tonight through a telescope? All right. Good. What else? What else can we see better with a telescope? Yeah? Stars. Stars. Sure. Yes? Clouds of dust. Oh, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Planets. Planets, right. Do we have to, I mean, can a, can a telescope be used um, to look at things on Earth, too? Yeah, if you're far away um, from a bird you want to see, or you want to see a, a boat that's um, off in the distant water, you can use the telescope to see things on Earth better as well. You want to spy on people far away? Nobody's going to do that. Shouldn't have even mentioned that. <laughs> um, sketching as a scientist and an artist. Um, <clears throat> So why would we bother to do this tonight? There's a bunch of different reasons, but um, pictures, people have been using, human beings have been using pictures, illustrations to communicate since before um, recorded history, since before uh, writing was invented. So um, it's kind of, it makes a lot of sense to think that a drawing would, could be used by someone designing a telescope or a microscope to communicate to someone else what it's going to look like. As I'm sitting, standing here in this um, room, I notice even this is a um, an architect's sketch of the observatory and um, the uh, the observing deck. So um, that's one reason why um, you might want to sketch a telescope or a microscope to communicate information. Um, but both scientists and artists sketch things um, that interest them, that they're curious about, that they want to know more about. Um, even scientists who don't consider themselves to be artists, don't think they draw well, will sketch um, their observations. Um, because when a person takes the time to look at something and think about it, in order to draw it so that it looks like something that people would recognize, they have to slow down and stop and notice things, notice details that you wouldn't notice if you were just taking a photograph. And um, that can be important if you're trying to learn more about something. And that's actually the main reason why I want you to try to sketch a telescope tonight. Because um, I know that when you look at the telescope for details, uh, like the focuser and the shape and the length, um, you're going to understand better how it works. Um, and that can only be helpful to you as a scientist. Uh, I have two examples of sketches up here. Um, one um, was by a student of mine a number of years ago when I used to invite my Helen Plain students here. So you can see this. Um, these two happy astronomers are looking at, what are they looking at through this telescope? Yeah? The moon and stars. The moon and the stars, you bet. And then this is um, a sketch, of the, the designer's um, sketch of the 200-inch um, telescope at Mount Palomar that at the time was the biggest, most impressive telescope that there was. Um, now, I remember this first slide that I showed you, the James Webb Telescope. This was like the Webb Telescope of their time. Um, this was a sketch by um, Russell Porter, who was just an all-around Renaissance man who could do just about anything um, that had to do with machining and telescopes and exploring and drawing. He was an Arctic explorer, but he also um, was very involved in um, building telescopes and teaching people how to build telescopes. And his legacy continues with Stellafane up um, in Vermont. Some of you have heard of that. I won't get, that'll be another topic for another night. <clears throat> um, so microscopes here, um, for tonight, we're basically talking about compound microscopes, which um, uses a series of lenses to show us things that are um, too small for us to see. So basically, we're talking about the kind you might use in your science class. Um, and I have um, one here that I brought from um, uh, my, my office, but um, you, you can see this one here, 
and you can see this one here. How are these two different? Yes? One has a screen. Okay, one has a screen, yeah. And the other one, you have to see what you're looking at through the eyepieces there, right? So these days, everything's going digital, so you can use microscopes that have a screen or even a big screen like this. Telescopes um, can operate like that as well. So you can, um, most of the telescopes that we have tonight, for you to see, all of the telescopes you have, we have tonight for you to see, you look through the um, eyepiece. But I know our big telescope under the dome can be hooked up to the computer so you can see um, the image on the screen. It probably isn't set up that way tonight. Um, and then this is just to show you the parts of the um, microscope. We'll talk a little bit more about that later in my program um, when we're comparing um, the telescopes and microscopes again. But I just want you to notice this one here that's labeled with the eyepiece and the objective lens and the focuser controls and um, the uh, illuminator and the mechanical stage. This is where you put the specimen that you're going to be looking at. And then I have this one here. Does anybody notice something that's different between this one and that one? There's a bunch of things, but there's one major thing about this one that's different from that one. I'm going to give everybody a moment to just look and think. Okay. What do you think is different? Um, that has two eyepieces and that has one. Two eyepieces and one eyepieces. Was she right? I saw your hand up there. Is that what you're going to say, too? Um, yeah. There's another oh, there's something else you noticed? Oh, I love it. Good. No objective lenses. Oh, yes, you're right. We've only got the one right down there. You're really noticing details. Good. Thank you. You mentioned that here we've got the three objective lenses there, and we don't, or I think that's four, and um, we only have this right here, this piece right here. So, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you for being good noticers. Um, I don't want to get too technical here, but in, when we're talking about telescopes in a minute, knowing about the light path, that's the, the, the path that the light takes um, to get from what you're looking at to your eye becomes important. And with a microscope, it's basically going straight, straight from the thing you're looking at to your eye. But I want to go back just a little bit here to one, the screen here because I skipped something. Notice this says illuminator. That means it's a light, okay? So a, t a microscope has something, a light source, to help you see what you're looking at better. It helps it light, light it up from behind. Telescopes don't have an illuminator on them. Does anybody know why a telescope does not need a light source on it? Where is the light coming from for the thing that we're looking at through a telescope? Where is the light coming from? Hmm. That's a tricky question. When we're looking at the moon, does anybody know where the light is coming from for the moon? Where? The sun. The sun. I love it. Everybody was going to say that, right? Because when we're looking at the moon, we're looking at the reflected light of the sun. So that's the light for the telescope is from the sun or the stars or whatever it is that we're looking at. Comes, it, the light comes from the thing that we're looking at. <clears throat> okay. Um, as I was doing research for this program tonight, I just came across all sorts of beautiful antique telescopes that I thought, again, just look like works of art, sculpture, sculptural pieces, so I couldn't resist putting them in here for you to look at too. <laughs> Um, and then I wanted to put something historical in here. Um, I'm not going to get too deep into the history, but um, this is um, the telescope, a very um, old telescope that was used by Robert Hooke, and he was the person who discovered cells. So um, Galileo, Galilei, used his first telescope to discover the moon of the moons of Jupiter and all sorts of other amazing things. This is a replica of that. Um, and I couldn't resist putting this slide in here too because of the history 
of, um, <clears throat> of this um, microscope um, and also the sketch that goes along with it. And you can see the illuminator is actually a little flame. <clears throat> and then here's another one here, another old microscope. And um, this is the illuminator for this microscope. What, what is the light source for this? It's not electric. What's the light source here? Does anybody recognize that? Hmm, that's a really antique thing there. I, I remember seeing this in my grandmother's house. It's a little, um, a little lantern with some fuel in there, so you'd light the wick. It's sort of like a candle. Now we're into our telescopes, and for tonight's, the purposes of tonight's program, I'm going to say there's two basic types of telescopes, a refracting telescope and a reflecting telescope. A reflecting telescope, well, what, what do we, um, what would you think of when you think of something that's called reflecting, a reflection? What do you think would be a part of something that talks about having a reflection? Hmm, this is one right here, and I need a volunteer who's close by. Yeah, come on up here. You can come on up, all right? And then you can come up too, and you can tell tell us um, if she's if she sees the same thing as you do. I want you to look in here, okay, and tell me what you see at the end of this tube. See me. You see you. What do you think is back there? A mirror. A mirror. All right, let's have your friend take a look and tell us if um, she's noticing the same thing as you. What do you see there? Hmm? You see you too? All right, stay right where you are, because I want you to look. No, I'm going to turn this around a little bit, and I want you to tell me something about the other end. What do you see on the other end there? Anything? Black, right? It's, it's, it's covered up, right? That's the back of the mirror. All right, but thank you. That was really helpful. So a reflecting telescope has a mirror as part of the optics. Um, and a refracting telescope does not have a mirror. And I, as I was saying, this is a replica of Galileo's telescope, and I would look straight through it. And it's just amazing to think that Galileo saw anything with a telescope like this. But the light goes straight from this end all the way out to this end to my eye with no mirror. And there's one in the back there that is also a refracting telescope. And you can tell refracting telescopes from reflecting telescopes because refracting telescopes are long and skinny. Reflecting telescopes are usually bigger in diameter and kind of shorter in length. Depends on what, you know, how, how, what it's supposed to be used for. But generally, the long, skinny ones are reflecting telescopes. Um, I'm watching our time here. I'm starting to run over time, so I'm going to go through this as quickly as I can. But um, <clears throat> this is an illustration of a diagram of a reflecting telescope. So the eyepiece is kind of up at what we might say the top or the front end, and the mirror would be right down there. But I want you to notice this important word here. Who can read that for us? Yes? Focuser. Focuser, yes. That is so important to know where the focuser is. And if you were sketching a telescope, you would see the focuser and you would sketch it. And then you would know where it was if someone told you what it is. I want you to, um, when you go out and look through the telescopes tonight, don't be afraid to ask the operator, the telescope operator, where the focuser is. A lot of times people don't ask that question and they and it's not focused for them and they can't see the things really well. So a telescope operator wants you to be able to see well what they're showing you. So um, please speak up if you can't see it well. <coughs> and here we have the light path of the two different kinds of telescopes. The refractor that's like this one. Remember long and skinny? Okay, and it goes, it goes, oops, it goes straight, basically straight through to the eye. But with the reflector, there's the mirror. It's actually a reflecting telescope. Actually, has two mirrors, and it does a, the light path goes a zig, does a zigzag. It bounces off the primary mirror to the smaller secondary mirror, and then out the eyepiece to your eye. And that allows it to be um, 
a bigger telescope in terms of what you can see without having the length. So tonight, the telescope operators know that you're going to be looking not just through them, but at them as well to notice the details that you need to see to sketch them if you're going to do that sketching. So don't be afraid to look in the wrong end, as I had these young astronomers do, look in the wrong end of the telescope to see um, what you can see down there, <clears throat> and try to identify what you're looking at as well, what type of telescope I mean. And um, just in the interest of time, I'm going to move through here. Let's not forget about binoculars. Did anybody see binoculars set up outside? Yeah. Yes? Good. Okay, those can be interesting to sketch as well, particularly the binoculars. Are they, is it set up on one of those um, interesting uh, uh, stands? On a, tri tripod. on a tripod? Okay, even that's cool. cool. Even that's it. All right, good. Um, and then uh, tonight, um, this you'll see this telescope, which is our big one up on the observing deck. Um, I put this in here because even though it's not a telescope or a microscope, there's no lens or objective, um, it's still this beautiful sundial is also a sculptural piece that's worth sketching. This telescope is out there tonight. Um, did anybody, does anybody recognize this one from the observing deck? Um, so this, does anybody know what kind of telescope this one is? Just by looking at it? Okay, that's all right. You're, you're not experts yet, but you will be tonight. <laughs> this is a reflecting telescope. So ask the, um, the young woman who's operating it, if if you can look um, down uh, to the wrong end to see the mirror, um, if she's not showing you something interesting in the sky, she should be able to say yes. She's my daughter, so you can tell her I, I said so. <laughs> um, and then this, I just because what we're doing tonight, I had to show you the earliest known illustration of a telescope. This is a refracting telescope. So is there a mirror in this one? No mirror, because it's not a reflecting telescope. Um, so this is your uh, challenge for tonight, to sketch and identify at least two different types of equipment tonight. And to do that, um, I have the Astronomy Sketching Journal, which I hope, um, there's plenty of pages in here, I hope you'll do some more sketching than just tonight. Um, but there's two main pages. I'm sorry, it is pretty bright after looking at everything dark to see the white here. This is for um, sketching something that you see in the sky tonight, like the moon or Orion's nebula. Um, scientists um, always find it important to include this information um, in their observational sketches. You do the sketch of the moon or um, a, a constellation right in here. Um, and this is to sketch a telescope or binoculars that you see tonight. Um, and then you can include which one, what it is that you're sketching. And don't be afraid to ask the operator, um, you know, wh which one of these boxes you would check. And you could do your little sketch, like Russell Porter or my student in, in this space right here. And um, that's it for tonight.